GTX 1050 Ti. This GPU was released in 2016 as a budget solution for 1080p gaming with an MSRP of $139. Now while some of the 1050 Ti's came with a supplemental 6-pin power connector, most people chose to go for the ones that had no such connector and were powered by the PCI slot itself meaning that these GPUs were compatible with every single power supply and the gamers that were on an extreme budget could just find some cheap office PC, simply add this 1050 Ti and start gaming like that. Nowadays you can probably find these GPUs for about 50-ish dollars, depending on where you live, but as the time goes on, the older hardware becomes more and more irrelevant. Nevertheless, there still are some people that would love to game on a GTX 1050 Ti. Now obviously, a budget graphics card from 8 years ago will not be able to do too much, but I still wanna know just how much life it has left in it and how well it can handle the modern games in 2024. So, why don't we head over to the benchmarks and see what this GPU can do. Let's start with CS2. This game is probably the least demanding one that we'll be testing today. We're running it at 1080p medium settings and as expected, we're getting hundreds of FPS. After playing the deathmatch for about 5 or so minutes, we averaged around 160 FPS. Now, even though the game itself was released just a few months ago, it is not too graphically intensive. So unless you wanna have more than 200 FPS on the highest settings, a GPU such as this should be more than enough to give you a smooth 100 plus FPS in the game. Doom Eternal I tried playing this game on both medium and low settings, and even though both were equally fine, lower settings gave me the best experience in terms of responsiveness and the smoothness of the game. The FPS barely ever went below 60, even when there was a lot happening on the screen. Sometimes it even went as high as mid-90s, but overall we averaged around 72 FPS. Forza Horizon 5 We are running this game on very low preset and we have TAA enabled, which basically smoothens the edges of the cars and other objects. After a full run of this built-in benchmark, we averaged around 73 FPS. The game had no stutters whatsoever and it was a smooth experience all around. Halo Infinite Here I was a bit worried because I know how demanding the game is, so I went straight for the lowest settings and reduced the resolution scale down to 75%. And I gotta say, it wasn't half bad. In fact, I think it was pretty alright. The input latency was decent and I didn't even see a single stutter throughout the game. The FPS never went below 40 and it mostly stayed between high 40s and low 50s. Now if you're wondering whether or not this is actually playable, from my point of view it is, and I think you will have a great time playing it if this is the GPU you have. Red Dead Redemption 2 now I don't necessarily play this game at all, hence why we're running the built-in benchmark, but it feels like if we were to load into the actual game, we would have a similar experience as we had in Halo Infinite. On the lowest preset with FSR set to balanced, we averaged around 53 FPS in this built-in benchmark. And I know that this game specifically doesn't look as great on the lowest settings, but let's not forget that we're gaming on GTX 1050 Ti in 2024, and we can still play most games at or around 60 FPS. Sons of the Forest Here I chose the lowest possible settings and set FSR to balanced. After running around for a few minutes, we averaged around 56 FPS. Now there were a few stutters every once in a while, but that's just how this game works and small stutters like that can happen even on higher end systems. Visually, the lowest settings do not look too bad in this game, especially with FSR on, so in case you're on an old system and are wondering if you can play Sons of the Forest on a GTX 1050 Ti, I would say that it's mostly playable. Cyberpunk will be our last game for today's benchmarks. Among all of the games that we've tested so far, Cyberpunk is probably the most demanding one of them all. At 1080p lowest settings, with FSR set to balanced, 
we averaged around 47 FPS. Now, even though that barely qualifies as playable, it honestly wasn't too bad. Yes, the FPS went to low 30s at times, but let's not forget what kind of GPU we are gaming on. GTX 1050 Ti was good, but it wasn't amazing by any means. Its goal was to simply play every single game on the lowest settings at the very least. So the fact that we're playing games like Cyberpunk in 2024 at a semi-decent frame rate should deserve a bit of praise. GPUs like this were never meant to stay relevant for this long, but yet, here we are. Overall, I really didn't expect too much from this GPU, but thanks to the upscaling methods and newer drivers, we were still able to play all of these games at an acceptable frame rate. And I know that there are games like Starfield or Alan Wake 2 that have way higher requirements than all of the games that we've tested today, but I think it's fair to say that GTX 1050 Ti did way better than it should have. If you're one of those people that is still gaming on this GPU or even is looking to buy one, I hope this video can serve you well and help you understand the capabilities and the limits of GTX 1050 Ti. On that note, let's wrap up this video. Thank you so much for watching and as always, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.